Hello again. This lecture is focused on applying appropriate sealant adhesive, the first under the common competencies of automotive servicing and C2. So the learning objectives are as follows. Identify appropriate sealant and adhesive. Prepare surface for adhesive or uh, sealant. Apply sealant and adhesive and store and dispose of sealant and adhesive. So the first question is, what is an adhesive and what is a sealant and how do they differ? Let's try to look at them one by one. So adhesive functions and forms. Here you have here a photo. So we have here a substrate, two substrates. So basically these are the two things that uh, you would like to use uh, an adhesive with. So what does an adhesive do? to to this uh, do sorry to this substrate so basically it is to stick them together okay so the adhesive is here in the middle therefore to meet the performance needs of the particular application two factors are important the first is adhesion which is uh, the bond with each substrate sticking to them so they can be held together. So the purpose then of adhesives is for them to, uh, for the substrates to be kept together. Okay, uh, parts of cars, for example, and you'd like to put them together so uh, they will not be detached from each other. There should be adhesion, they should be able to stick together. Okay, the next we have cohesion. The adhesive must have enough internal strength so that it holds together and does not break within the film of adhesive when force is applied to pull the two forces apart. So if these two substrates are being pulled apart, so a force is being used to pull them apart, then there should be cohesion. The adhesive must have an internal strength and enough internal strength for it not to break and for them not to separate. Therefore, when we say adhesives, the purpose is to keep substrates together. Okay. Now, what about sealants? So, the functions and forms of a sealant. In here, in the drawing that you can see here, the sealant is quite a lot wider compared to that of the adhesive because the sealant's uh, job is different. It's not to to stick the substrates together, but then to fill in gaps or spaces. So a sealant is a material designed only to fill up spaces, can be joints, gaps, or cavities that occur between two substrates. If you're going to compare it with your teeth, and there is a space in the middle, but the teeth is still considered good by the dentist, then a filling will be placed there. So that is considered an a sealant. It did not try to keep those two substrates uh, intact because that is the job of the adhesive, but it tried to fill in the empty space. Okay, then continue on sealants uh, functions and forms we have here some examples so the space between a bathtub and the wall then you'd like to um, fill in the gap then you put a sealant then you have there the space between two precast concrete panels forming the wall of a warehouse or the space between the body and the fender of a car so the sealant is not there to hold the two materials together, as I've said, but it is used only to form the seal against the entry of liquid, first one, second one, gas, and the entry of solid. Because sometimes this can cause destruction or this, this can uh, uh, call for dirt. So instead of the dirt sealing these spaces, then we put a sealant so that dirt will not be uh, will not go in so you it will be avoiding the entrance of liquids gases and solids factors for successful performance of a sealant include first impermeability so air and water must not go through the sealant that is impermeability next one is flexibility so while forming a solid the cured sealant must be elastic enough to maintain the tight seal even when there is movement of the substrates. 
and an example is a glass curtain wall building where the spaces between the panels of glass and the underlying steel structure are filled with sealant. So uh, the between the glass and the uh, steel, there should be a sealant to be placed in, in the middle. So the sealant must be able to move, adhering firmly to the glass and to the steel, and have not cracks or holes formed within the sealant that will let in air or even water. The third one is stability. So when we say stability, the sealant should not substantially change between the time it is manufactured and the time it is applied. It should not uh, pre-cure in the can or cartridge. It should be stable, all right? Then the last one, rheology. If applied to a surface as between two wall panels, it must stay in place and not sag. If applied in a horizontal gap, as between the sections of an airport runway, it must level or even out. So it does not sag, it does not go down or else. If it is uh, vertical, then if it will sag, then if all the sealant will go down, then there would be no more sealant on top. Okay. Next. The types and uses of gasket sealant. So gasket sealant are also being used as sealant or gasket is being used as a sealant. So the gasket sealant is a liquid compound used to improve gasket sealing, hold the gasket in place, repair a damaged gasket, or form a new gasket. So in cars, there are a lot of gaskets there to um, keep the... Um, so that if there is friction between these metals, remember it's a car, so there would be metals. Uh, it's mostly con composed of metals. That if they uh, are are having in contact with each other, then the gasket would be very helpful for them not to be destroyed. Okay, so there, that's the use of the gasket. And if the gasket is destroyed, then you put you have to put some sealant to keep it still. These sealants flow into surface irregularities and improve gasket sealing. So there is a wide range of gasket sealants from which to choose from. The sample in here are just a few. We have here some um, brand names, okay? But of course, if you go to the market, there would be more. And Adhesive sealant and other chemical sealing materials. So we have many gasket sets include a label with the proper chemical recommendation for uh, use with the gasket set. Some even include sealers and sets when the original equipment manufacturer used a sealer to replace a gasket cannot be manufacturers for the application. Okay. So we proceed to the next one. We have chemical thread retainers. So chemical thread retainers can either be aerobic or non-aerobic. Chemical adhesives and sealants give added holding, holding to power and sealing ability where two parts are joints. So sealants usually are added to threads where fluid contact is frequent. Okay, that's why we have here the chemical thread. So chemical thread retainers could be aerobic or non-aerobic, as I mentioned. So what's the difference of these two? When we say aerobic, it cures in the presence of air. Pinapaypayan siguro ito para mag-dry. When we say anaerobic, it cures in the absence of air. So these chemical products are used in place of lock washers, okay? So in automotive, we also have these term washers. Of course, there are numerous locations in an engine where pre-cut or pre-molded gaskets can benefit from the services of a chemical sealant. For example, to seal the intake manifold on a V-type engine, it is important to place a dab of silicon in the corners. The same can be said about the front cover to oil pan joint rear bearing, can seals, and valley pan manifold installations. Next, adhesives. So adhesives are quick drying contact adhesives. Okay, they are designed for bonding cork, rubber fiber, fi rubber fiber, and metal gaskets in the place prior to assembly. Okay, so 
uh, gasket adhesives form a tough bond when used on clean dry surfaces adhesives do not aid the sailing ability of the gasket they are meant only meant only to hold the gaskets in place during component assembly therefore we cannot remove the gasket and just replace replace it with a sealant if the gasket is really needed for that particular uh, part so use small dabs okay they will dry quicker for fast installation. So do not assemble components until the adhesive completely dries. Most adhesives are ideal for use on gasket applications such as valve covers, push rod covers, manifold and manifold end seals, and oil pan end seals. Okay. So as you go along with your lessons, you'll be encountering these uh, parts of uh, the uh, car. Okay, now we go to the next, the sealants, the general purpose. We have in here some examples. Okay, Gen we, all, we have general purpose sealants and we also have flexible sealants. So when we say general purpose sealers, they are sometimes called chemical positioning agents. They come in liquid form and are, able, are available in a brush type known as brush tack. General purpose sealers form a tacky, flexible seal when uh, applied in thin, even coat that aids in gasket sealing by helping position the gasket during assembly. Uh, the chemicals in the general purpose sealant will not upset the design performance of most chemical gaskets. So the possible exception to this is that sealant manufacturers do not recommend their use on rubber parts. These are non-hardening and can use rubber gaskets to sleep. Well, we will try to see what is that non-hardening later. So flexible sealants, on the other hand, are most often used on threads of bolts and go into fluid patterns. Passages. So they are non-hardening sealers that fill voids, preventing the fluid from running away of a uh, running up of threads. Okay, so they have to be intact, the liquid. So that's the purpose of the flexible sealant. They resist the chemical attack of lubricants, synthetic oils, detergents, antifreeze, gasoline, and diesel. Next, we have the silicon formed on clay sealants. Okay, so sealants gasket can be used to replace conventional paper. We have cork or cork rubber gaskets. It is generally for use on oil pans, uh, valve covers, thermostat housing, timing covers, water pumps, and other such installations. That's for the silicon formed and place sealants. Next one, we have the anaerobic formed and place sealants. So never use a sealant or an, uh, formed in place gasket on exhaust manifolds. The major difference between aerobic and anaerobic other than their curing is also the gap filling ability. So typically, uh, 0 0.050 inch is the absolute limit of any anaerobic gaps filling materials. Some are only designed to seal 0 0.005 to 0 0.010 inch gap. Anaerobic sealers are intended to the, uh, to the use between the machine services of rigid castings, not on flexible stamping. So once hardened, a good anaerobic bond is unbelievably tenacious and can withstand high temperatures. Therefore, care must be taken in selection. They tend to be highly speci specialized and more readily interchangeable. For example, there are various levels of thread locking products that range from medium strength, anti-vibration agents to high strength, weld-like retaining compounds. So the inadvertent use of the wrong product could make future disassembly an impossibility. Therefore, you always have to check the label to be certain that an aerobic material will suit the purpose of the application. Okay, so these of uh, an aerobic formed and play sealants are used for thread locking as well as gasket. So as a retaining compound, they are mostly used to hold sleeves, bearings, 
okay just like this what you what you see in the picture then locking screw nuts in place where there is a high exposure to vibration okay then we also have hylomar hylomar is actually a brand name okay it stands for high low martson mar product it's neither an rtv or uh, an aerobic okay hylomar is a combination of uh, polyurethane paste and silica not silicon uh, flakes mixed with methylene chloride solvent so when hylomar is clamped in the joint the silica flakes interlocked and encapsulate the plastic paste effectively shielding it from heat liquids and contaminants that might otherwise dissolve it so that's the use of hylomar because hylomar never hardens or cures the center remains soft and pliable like an armor plate sponge so that's the good thing about this one if there is a need for non-curing then this one is non-curing as a sealing supplement hylomar sticks to virtually any surface uh, resist all fluids including gasoline and has a claim temperature range of 50 degrees to more than 600 degrees fahrenheit therefore it can be used to high temperature uh, materials so in addition if a hylomar coated gasket is set down wrong it can be peeled off and reseated without damage and of course anything that you use uh, wrongly will be destroyed as well Okay, then we also have the anti-seize compounds. So uh, these prevent the similar metals from reacting with one another and seizing. This material type is used on many fasteners, especially those used with aluminum parts. So a uh, tip there is you always have to follow the manufacturer's recommendations when using these compounds. Okay, now we go to applying sealants. Okay, under this one, we have the types of sealants. So the major categories of sealants are three. We have the hardening, the non-hardening, and the tapes. So whether a sealant is hardening or non-hardening, so sorry, hardening depends upon its chemical composition and curing characteristics rather than its initial form. So they may look the same initially, but uh, the hardening and the non-hardening will depend upon on their curing okay or the use after so sealants generally come in non-solid forms in a wide range of viscosities some epoxy sealers come in powdered form and must be melted when applied a certain asphalt based sealers and waxes are solid and applied by a hot melt system so thermosetting film adhesives used for sealing also come in tape form and they generally require heat and pressure for cooling as i've said again they may come in the same form or different form but it doesn't necessarily mean that that is uh, the reason they are hardening or non-hardening or um, tapes so let's start with the hardening types. These sealants can be divided into classes. We have the rigid, which cure or set up firm, rigid, and we also have the flexible, which remain flexible after curing. Okay, so for the rigid, they crack if flexed and are often difficult to remove. Some notably, the epoxies can join as well as seal. Common rigid sealants, which are distinctive to this group, are those based on components of epoxies, polyesters, acrylics, polyamides, and polyvinyl acetates or, acetates or PVA. Flexible sealants, on the other hand, remain flexible after curing and have elastic bases. So their range of flexibility varies considerably and thus hardness. And as so, so as hardness, some of these sealants are true rubber. Many have good adhesive qualities and all can be compounded to resist a variety of environmental conditions. So there are some parts of the car that would require you to have these hardening types of sealants. Next one, we have the butt joint. Okay, the butt joint with the bucking in here. So use sealant if thickness or plate is sufficient or 
sealed if plates are thin. So tape can also be used here. You have here the uh, there. If joint moves due to dynamic loads or thermal, expa thermal expansion and contraction, a flexible sealant with a good uh, adhesion must be used. So select flexible tape for butt joint if movement is anticipated. Okay. Next, we have here uh, lap joint. Okay. So lap joint. Uh, there is an overlapping of the two substrates naman. Kaya nga siya lap joint. So, it's like a sandwich sealant okay, between mating surfaces and rivet, bolt, or spot weld seam to secure joint. Oh, by the way, guys, these terms are also being used in uh, welding, in the welding industry. Okay, so um, you have to understand na, yeah, uh, yung mga terms na ito, ginagamit din doon, baka narinig nyo na if you have uh, heard some lectures on welding. Okay, then we also have the angle joint. Dito naman may angulo siya. Titignan nyo may angle. Yan. You'd like to join these two materials in an angled manner. So, dito yung angle joint, joint ang tawag. Okay. Then, okay, this was uh, mentioned already. Next, we also have the non-hardening type. So, these soft setting sealants stay wet after application and never truly die, dry. Okay? So, they generally cannot be depended on to perform a joining function, although some formulations are used as adhesives in low-cost stress joints. So, these sealants are characterized by the mastic type Pastes usually applied to seams of trowel or brush. Okay? So, may, may specific din na gamit itong mga non-hardening types. Pero, never nga silang mag-dry. Okay? After curing, walang dryness na mangyayari. You, we also have these tapes, the third one. So, tapes are available in a variety of backing and adhesives, usually in pressure-sensitive or solvent-activated adhesive backs. Uh, Self-sticking tapes are also made. So, these are some non-hardening sealants that are formulated so that they can be packaged in tape form. They are not adhesive-backed and can be easily uh, thumbed into place. Okay? May gamit din itong mga tapes. Next, joints for sealant. So, joints to which a sealant can be applied depend to a great extent on the type of sealant. For example, a free-flowing sealant cannot be applied to a vertical surface. A non-sagging type must be used there. Lap joints can be mostly uh, most easily sealed with tape Field sealed with the thickness of a joint sheets will support a bead of sealant and sandwich sealed. So, may mga combination din dito. Sandwich sealing is a common method by structural adhesive where ordinary sealants are used. The sealing material is brushed, extruded, troweled, and thumped on, and the lap joint made and mechanically secured with rivets or bolts and nuts. Ayan. Next, uses of sealants. An inside sealer keeps in a fluid or other medium. An outside sealer keeps out contaminants. Uh, tignan nyo yung pagkakaiba nito. An inside sealer keeps in a fluid para hindi mag-leak. Dito naman, an outside sealer keeps out contaminants para walang pumasok na contaminant. So, some sealers perform both functions also. Okay, the uses of sealants, we have here joining, electrical or thermal insulating, noise reduction, vibration dampening, expansion and contraction control, smoothing and filleting, protective coating, tampering prevention. However, sealants can be used to perform other functions, some of which are almost as important as the primary ro role of sealing. Okay. Next one, we go to the proper storage and disposal of sealants and adhesives. So, the possible ingestion of adhesives and sealants should be avoided. That's why we have to learn how to keep them or store them properly. 
the possible ingestion of adhesives and sealants should be avoided and the consumption of storage of food or drink should be prohibited in areas where adhesives are handled or used. All users should thoroughly wash their hands also when handling this one. This is especially uh, prior to smoking, eating, drinking, or going to the toilet. Some, adhe uh, sorry, some adhesive can emit dust or toxic vapors and as such represent an inhalation hazard. So suitable if you wear mask, respirators, or adequate ventilation so that uh, you would not be able to inhale any uh, hazardous material. Skin contacts also should be minimized and totally avoided where possible by the use of protective clothing such as gloves and aprons. That's why we always have to use our PPEs. Okay. Next, allergies can also be caused by the if you have if you get in contact with these uh, sealants and uh, adhesives. So there is always the possibility of an allergic reaction. You have to be very careful. You have to know your allergies. Next, spillage and waste disposal. So, spillages of any type should be attended to immediately. They could affect the environment, the flammable or be flammable or represent a significant sleep hazard. So, water-based products should be pumped into containers for disposal or taken up with sand or other absorbent material before being disposed of in suitable containers. So the small amount of residual material can be cleaned up with water before it dries. But you cannot do that with big amount. The residual wastewater may go directly to sewerage waste provided it is permissible to discharge this type of material to the sewer, sewer lines. An alternative method is to soak up the spillage with an inert material which can be placed in a suitably closed container for disposal in accordance with lo local authority requirements. You have to remember, you do not just put them in the garbage. There is a proper, dis proper dispo disposal for these ones. So this technique is particularly appropriate for solvent-based adhesives using sand, clay, or powdered limestone as the absorbent material. In this case, the waste itself must be handled as hazardous. Care should be taken in the disposal of full or empty containers which have held solvent-based adhesives or thinners in order to avoid a latent explosion or a fire hazard. Okay. What about storage? So the storage of adhesives and sealants should be restricted to no smoking. You have to understand that many of these ones are Flammable, okay? Yeah. Since even for non-flammable adhesive, there is a risk for vapors can be given off, which will be converted to combustion to toxic products by any hot surface. So that's a very big problem also. You have to store them properly, okay, if we want to. And when we try to store them, we have to label them properly, okay, for... Uh, for safety, to ensure that the useful shelf life of adhesive product is not exceeded, strict rotation of stock should be observed and possible safety ha hazards for aging of avoided. In all cases, the manufacturer's instructions and directions printed on the label should be observed. Do not get a lot and store them at home or in the in the uh, shop if you don't need them. I think it would be best if we only have what is needed for a span of time, okay? So to avoid to avoid wasting also and also the problem of storage and uh, disposal, okay? Then I'd like to end my discussion with this. All right. In Japan, there is a certain kind of art. Uh, it's, the, it's the golden... Repair. They call it the golden repair in their language. They call it kinchugi. So you notice in here, there here is a broken ceramic, but they tried to mend the broken ceramic using gold. So this is supposed to be gold. But nowadays, if gold is not uh, available, then we can use other materials as long as it will become beautiful and artful. So this one is telling us that uh, this can be an adhesive or a sealant yeah, the, we could be this one. We could be this broken 
bowl. So our brokenness can be mended. But um, if we try to see what what could be that mending that is needed for uh, something that is broken aside from the sealants and adhesives if we're talking about our life eugene o'neill said man is born broken so he lives by mending and only the grace of god will be the glue thank you very much and i'll see you again in the next video